Good morning, saints. Welcome. Whether you are here live with us or joining us across the internet, we are glad that you are joining us this morning. I just ask that you would bow your head as we seek the Lord this morning in prayer and begin to worship and praise him. Jesus, thank you. Thank you for your sacrifice on the cross for us, for your immeasurable love that you have poured out for us. Thank you that you are alive. And we can celebrate you, we can walk with you, we can experience and engage with you. And I pray that you would make yourself known to each of us this morning in a very tangible, real way as we seek your presence this morning. Amen. Saints, if you're here with me, if you're able, I just invite you to stand as we seek the Lord and celebrate him today. Christ the Lord is risen today. The Lamb of God has taken our sins away. Love's redeeming work is done. Raise your voice, the King has overcome. Let's sing it together. Christ the Lord. Christ the Lord is risen today. our sins away love's redeeming work is done raise your voice the king has overcome hallelujah hallelujah Son of God proved his love that while we were sinners, Jesus died for us. No more shame, no more fear. Our Savior is alive forever. God. Love's redeeming work is done. Raise your voice, the King has overcome. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah. By His grace. Long ago, our sins were as solid, now they're white as snow. Love was nailed to a cross, His dying and His rising has changed our hearts. Christ the Lord is risen today. The Lamb of God has taken our sins away. Love's redeeming work is done. Raise your voice, the King has overcome. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Like him will rise, ours the cross, the grave, the sky. Made like him, like him will rise, ours the cross, the grave, the sky. Christ the Lord is risen today. Taking our sins away, amen. Love's redeeming work is done. Raise your voice, the King has overcome. 
Come sing to Christ the Lord. Christ the Lord is risen today. The Lamb of God has taken our sins away. Love's redeeming work is done. Raise your voice, the King has overcome. Hallelujah, hallelujah. The Bible says, like, a lot, a lot to sing new songs to the Lord. So we're going to sing a new song this morning. I'm going to teach you the, the chorus part of it, and uh, I think you'll catch on pretty easy. It's written by one of our, our local friends here and uh, another San Diego church. Anyway, I think you'll catch on. Here's, here's how it goes. So we're going to sing it over you and then invite you to sing along with us. Your love is greater. Your love is stronger, your love awakens, awakens, awakens me. Your love is greater, your love is stronger, your love awakens, awakens, awakens me. All right, pretty, pretty easy, right? All right, the biggest problem I have with this song is just that, like, it makes me think of coffee. It's not about coffee, this is about Jesus. And like my, one of my worship leader friends likes to say, if Jesus is in your heart, please inform your face. So we, we want to let the love of the Lord come out of us, not just our faces and our smiles and our voices, but our whole bodies. So maybe you'll help, you know, you, you notice we don't have a drummer up here this morning. Maybe you use your hands and your feet to just kind of clap along with us. Oh yeah, Stephen's got it over there. Except for you. You, you are not allowed to clap this morning, are you? Got a broken arm or something in the front row. Anyway, let's sing it together. Your love awakens me. Your love is greater. Your love is stronger. Your love awakens, awakens, awakens me. Your love is greater. Your love is stronger. Your love awakens, awakens, awakens me. between us by the cross you came and broke them down you broke them down and there were chains around us by your grace we are no longer bound no longer bound you called me out of the grave you called me into the light you called my name and then my heart came alive your love is greater your love is stronger your love awakens, awakens, awakens me. Your love is greater. Your love is stronger. Your love awakens, awakens, awakens me. Oh, 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 oh. Feel the darkness shaking. All the dead are coming back to die. I'm back to life. Hear the song awaken, all creation singing. You're alive, cause you're alive. You call me out of the grave. You call me into the light. You call my name and then my heart came alive. Your love is greater. Your love is stronger. Your love awakens, awakens, awakens me. Your love is greater, your love is stronger, your love awakens, awakens, awakens me. Your love is greater, your love is stronger, your love awakens, awakens, awakens me. Your love is greater, your love is stronger, your love awakens, awakens, awakens me. Oh, 
time your love awakens, your love is greater, your love is stronger, your love awakens, awakens, awakens me, your love is greater, your love is stronger, your love awakens, awakens, awakens me, yeah, y'all awake yet? Who am I that the highest king would welcome me? I was lost, but he brought me in. Oh, his love for me. Oh, his love for me. Through the sun sets free. Oh, his free. Forsaken, I am who you say I am. You are for me, not against me. I am who you say I am. I am chosen, not forsaken. I am who you say I am. You are for me, not against me. I am who you Yes, I am who you say I am. Who the sun is set free. Who the sun sets free. Who oh, is free in me. I'm a child of God. Yes, I am. In my Father's house, there's a place. forsaken. I am who you say I am. You are for me, not against me. I am who you say I am. I am chosen, not forsaken. I am who you say I am. You are for me, not against me. I am I 
I searched the world But it couldn't fill me Man's empty praise and Treasures that fade Are never enough And you came along Now satisfied here in your love. Oh, there's nothing better than you. No, there's nothing better than you. No, there's nothing. Nothing is better than you. I'm not afraid. Lord, you've seen them all, and you still call me friend. He's the God of the mountain. He's the God of the valley. And there's not a place your mercy and grace won't find me again. dancing you give beauty for ashes you turn shame into glory you're the only one who can you turn graves into gardens you turn seas into gardens you turn seas into highways you're the You turn shame into glory. You're the only one who can. You turn graves into gardens. You turn bones into armies. You turn seas into highways. You're the Jesus, it's an honor to stand in your presence, and it's only made possible by your son, Jesus Christ. 
who allows us to come into the throne room of heaven and obtain mercy and grace in time of need. And you see every man, woman, and child here this morning watching online. And you love them with an everlasting love. An everlasting love. It's enduring. In fact, your mercies are new every morning. And we need those mercies to wash over our troubled, weary, or confused hearts right now. That everything else will just fade away in the light of your glory and grace. That my God is able to do immeasurably more than what we could possibly ask, think, or imagine. According to His power, working through Jesus Christ in our lives and in the church. Oh, Lord, you're so good. You're so good. And we thank you that you are working out for good all things in our lives. You hear and you answer. And help us to be okay with those answers and that waiting and that trusting. We love you, God. We thank you for this time to worship. Look at your word. Open up our hearts to hear your voice, to have your perspective. And we pray this in Jesus' name. Amen? Amen. Amen. Good morning. Let's give the Lord. Yeah, you guys got the, got the clue. Hey, well, good morning. And I uh, do want to welcome you guys to Quest Church. If we haven't met, my name is Sherwood. I'm part of the uh, ministry team here. And it just uh, blesses my heart, as you would maybe say in the, in the South, I don't know, bless your heart, I don't, that's what my, my, what my mom would say, but um, blesses my heart to worship with you, to see um, our team lead us in worship, and uh, I don't know if you know, but this young couple over here, Jason and, and Molly, they're a married couple, and uh, we're blessed, I'm really blessed by their friendship and their ministry service here. Uh, Jason works all night, and then he's here serving and helping, and his, their daughter, Emily, is on the tech team. Ooh, I see the nice smile, beautiful smile, <laughs> always smiling, and uh, so it's a privilege to serve alongside so many wonderful people. Uh, if you guys have your Bibles, I would encourage you to grab them and turn to Genesis chapter 24 as well as your Genesis journal. We have those available in our cafe bookstore uh, just as a way to follow along, keep track, write notes down as the Lord speaks to you while we study through the scriptures. But uh, as we are continuing in post-COVID church, things aren't the same, and that's okay because uh, God's got it. As my youngest daughter, Eliana, likes to say, God's got it, and uh, that helps me as a daddy when I get overwhelmed. Um, and so we uh, have a family-style service. It's about an hour long, and we have our kids in here with us. Our youth actually are uh, going off with Pastor Dustin. So if there's any youth, feel free to run along <laughs> and uh, be with them. But we have our kids in here with us, and, uh, and I would be offended if our children that were with us didn't make noise and didn't wiggle and didn't play Legos. You got it, bud? Got your Lego box? Okay, cool. Um, and because uh, we're a family here and uh, God loves each and every single one of us. And so we have a, an awesome thing today. Uh, one is we're going to look at the scriptures, but uh, we also have baptisms after service. And so... I encourage you, immediately following this service, go grab some coffee and a donut or refreshment and join us in the corner of the quad on the patio, and we want to support and encourage those being baptized this morning, so it's going to be an awesome time. We are continuing our study through the book of Genesis. If uh, you've been with us over the past couple of months or you're new with us, uh, we are 
traveling through the book of Genesis, a series that we've entitled Origins, because in it we see the beginnings of creation, the beginnings of uh, human relation with, with God, and also the corruption that enters in to humanity uh, because of sin, and the redeeming, redemptive plan of salvation that God institutes in Genesis, but is woven all throughout the Old Testament, as well as being fulfilled in the New Testament through the person of Jesus Christ. And we have outlined the book of Genesis in two main sections, the first 12 chapters dealing with major events as related to creation, the fall, the flood, and these sort of things. And now chapter uh, chapter 13 through the rest of the uh, uh, chapters 50, we're looking at four key individuals. The first is Abraham. And so we've been looking at life lessons and things that Abraham has been growing in his faith. And he wasn't perfect in his faith, but through circumstances and events, God has been building his faith to a point last week where we saw him offer the most precious and valuable thing to him, his promised son Isaac, not withholding anything from the Lord, believing that God would even raise him from the dead in that sacrifice. And there's a picture that we see in in Isaac, in the portrait of Jesus, and his substitutionary sacrifice. The key verse there is that Abraham says to his son, God shall supply for himself a sacrificial lamb. And John the Baptist, if you remember in the New Testament, the Gospels, when he saw Jesus as a forebearer, one who would prepare the way for the Messiah, the Son of God, Jesus Christ, looked at Jesus and said, behold, the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. And so we see Jesus fulfilling this covenantal promise that God makes in the establishment of the Israelite people in Abraham's seed. And that seed is now, seed not only uh, is going to pass the blessing, but also the covenant on to Abraham's son Isaac. And so we see the continuation of that through the seed of Abraham here in chapter 24 and a little bit in chapter 25. But we're closing a chapter on, on Abraham We're going to see him pass away. Last week we saw his wife pass away. But the death of Abraham is uh, kind of the the, the tail end of the verses that we're going to read this morning. But in between these verses, we see an important uh, important event with Isaac um, finding a wife. And so if you wanted to just put a little simple outline for uh, our chapters and verses this morning, we're going to see first the pledge that Abraham's servant makes in promising that he will find a wife for Isaac, and that's in the first half of chapter 24. The second uh, part of chapter 24 deals with the proposal, so which is a little interesting. Isaac's not going to get down on one knee and propose to Rebecca. His servant is going to do the proposing, so I don't know, ladies, if you'd like that. Probably not. Uh, but uh, this was the way it was done back then, various customs. And so Abraham's servant is going to propose to Rebekah. And what we're going to see here is really a, a broader theme of the providence or the will of God. And I'd like for us to consider the theme of knowing God's will and understanding or discerning God's will, because I think that every single one of us are experiencing choices and decisions, whether to leave California or to stay in California. Oh, why are you chuckling? Don't do that. No, please. But please don't leave. We need Christians here. (laughs) Uh, (laughs) But follow the Lord. That's what we're going to talk about today. Uh, How to pray the will of God. And for this servant, as he travels, there is the providence of God. As he gets going and gets moving, we see God move Uh, And work in his circumstances to confirm the will of God as we get going. So that's going to be something we consider today. And then lastly, we're going to see the passing in the first uh, 14 verses of chapter 25. We see the passing of Abraham in his death, but also the passing of that blessing uh, on through his son Isaac. And so uh, let's look at verse 1 of chapter 24. Now, Abraham was old, well advanced in age in the Lord had blessed Abraham in all things, so Abraham said to his oldest 
servant of his house, who ruled over all that he had, please put your hand under my thigh, and I will make you swear by the Lord, the God of heaven and the God of earth. That's kind of a, an interesting way to uh, make an oath. Uh, we don't do that now. Post-COVID, we do the elbow bump, right, or the fist bump. I guess back then, well, let's just grab the thigh. Okay, that's kind of weird. Please, gentlemen, do not be grabbing each other's thighs today. I don't want to see that. Uh, but this was an, uh, an idea. <laughs> this was an idea of a serious oath that they were entering into. And so they make this promise and this pledge between Abraham and his servant. And what is that? That you will take a wife for my son from the daughters uh, of, that you will not take a wife for my son from the daughters of the Canaanites among whom I dwell, but you shall go to my country and to my family and take a wife for my son Isaac. And the servant said, perhaps the woman will not be willing to follow me to this land. So there's a problem here that arises, and that is we need to find Isaac, a wife, not from uh, Canaan, but from Abraham's family. And the plan is hatched to go and visit Abraham's family, and yet there's confusion about how this is all going to work out. And so the servant says, well, well, I'm not sure. Perhaps this woman doesn't go with me. Must I take your son back to the land from which you came? But Abraham said, beware that you do not take my son back there. And the Lord God of heaven who took me from my father's house, from the land of my family, who spoke to me and swore to me, saying, to your descendants I will give this land. He will send his angel before you, and you shall take a wife from uh, my son, for my son from there. And I, I love the the encouragement that Abraham gives his servant, and I think could also be extended to us today as we are facing decisions or seeking guidance or the will or the providence of God in our lives. One thing to remember is that as children of God, as we just sang, he goes before us. The scriptures say that he will never leave us nor forsake us. Just as uh, in the children of Israel in the wilderness, there was a pillar of, of fire by night and a, and, and a cloud of smoke during the day. And there was the presence of God that would go before them and after them and around them. And so that's a wonderful uh, promise to be reminded of that you are not alone when you're going through circumstances. And you may feel alone, even though we are more connected than ever in this world. Right now, we have all of the social media and all of the, the news and people at, a, at just a, a finger's touch. We can text, we can call, we can, we can post, you know, any of these things. But sometimes, even though we are super connected, we can feel super isolated and alone. And the beautiful thing about this church body is that even I can attest to my, my own life is that when I feel alone, I look around and I see my brothers and sisters. I see families and, and uh, kids and, and youth, and, and I say, wow, okay, we're going to get through this together as a church family, as a church body, but ultimately knowing that, that Jesus is not going to abandon you and say, whoa, that looks like some pretty rough seas ahead. That looks like some pretty dark times ahead. You, got, you go ahead on without me. In fact, um, Moses complained to the Lord, not complained, but had an argument or a conversation with him. And uh, God said, you know what? These people are so stubborn. Now, I'm sure you can't relate to that. I know that you're not stubborn. And you just follow the Lord super easy, just wherever he leads you. And you're just willing to jump in and do whatever. Now, me, on the other hand, I can be very stubborn and stiff-necked. And, and uh, so the people of Israel, they were really stubborn. And, uh, and God said, man, I've had enough with these people. You just go ahead and take them. Go try to find the promised land on your own. And Moses was so humble. The Bible says that he was the most humble person on the face of the earth. That he spoke with God face to face. Just a relationship. And you and I can do the very same thing face to face. In fact, Jesus says that if you see me, you've seen the Father. So if you have Jesus, you have God with you. You have Jesus. Jesus says he is God. And so you can talk with him face to face in your quiet time with, with your Bible open. If you want to see Jesus, we just open our Bibles. If we want to hear Jesus, we open our Bibles 
And I've talked with many people over the years that for, uh, for good or for, for bad purposes or circumstances in their lives, whether they brought them on themselves or maybe it was brought upon them, that they're struggling and they're going through difficult times and they're wondering, how do I get through this? And the first thing, the first thing I, sa- I ask and the last thing I ask is, when was the last time you read your Bible? Are you reading your Bible? Are you in the scriptures? Because oftentimes we, we lose perspective on God's heart and our identity and his role and purpose in our lives if we're not face-to-face with Jesus in our word. And so he says, I'm just not going to go with them. Moses, you take them. And Moses said, oh, God, I don't want to go anywhere with these people. Yeah, that was a good pastor. I like that. I'm not going to go anywhere with you guys unless Jesus is at the center. Unless Jesus is leading, and I don't, I'll, I'll lead you astray if you look to me. I'll, I'll let you down. I mean, I'll do my best to stay on my knees before the Lord and to humbly share uh, God's word as a meal for us to be encouraged. Yes, and I'll pray diligently and faithfully and lovingly and graciously for you. For you. And that's a privilege and that's a joy. But this Moses pastor, he was like, man, I'm not going to go anywhere unless you're here. And when Jesus is at the center of his church, in fact, it's his church. It's not my church. It's not the member's church. It's his church. Jesus says, I will build my church, and upon this rock, the gates of hell will not prevail. And Jesus is the rock. We build our lives upon him. And Moses says, unless you go with us, I'm not taking another step. And that's a good, play. That's a good response for every single one of us. Don't take another step. Because oftentimes, if we take a step without Jesus, we go in the wrong direction. We go in our own own way or our own will or our own plan. And that ends up wandering for a long time. And we got to come back to the place of meeting the Lord where we left him. And so, but the wonderful thing is that he is still gracious to us. So if you're waiting right now, wait for that next step. You might not have the the whole picture. It might not be clear for you, like everything that you want to know, uh, but God is faithful to just lead you in that next step. And he actually does this for this servant because here in these scriptures, he's wondering, okay, well, is this really going to work out? And, and, And Abraham encourages him. He says, you know, the Lord is going to lead you. He's going to send his angels before you. And he will lead you. And what I love about this is that if you look at verse 12, after he kind of says, okay, all right, I promise. I promise that I will go and do this thing. And I believe that God is going to prosper me in this pursuit. And then we see the servant do something that should be our response when we're trying to figure out the will of God. Then he said, the servant, O Lord God of my master Abraham, Please give me success this day and show kindness to my master Abraham. Behold, here I stand by the well of water. So he makes preparations. He loads his camels. He gets to the the, the land. And now he sets up camp and he's waiting upon the Lord. While he's waiting, he's praying. Everyone say pray. Now say it again. Pray. Okay. We're going to pray. That's what we do. That's what we seek the Lord. Now that can be a prayer in Lord Jesus, thank you for this food. Bless it to my body. In Jesus' name, amen. Yeah, it can be that. But it can also be just really having an extended time in the Lord's presence like we do on Sunday mornings. And I try to make that a point for us to just let the Holy Spirit minister to us as we're gathering because I, I don't know if you know this. Every single, every single Sunday is different. We come with various concerns. And what's beautiful about that is if, if Jesus is the head of the church, then he knows everything that's going on as we come into this room. And the Holy Spirit was given as our comforter and our counselor. Then apart from me, Jesus says, you can do nothing. And so as he, through the Holy Spirit, is moving in this crowd and this group of people, he's has a unique thing for us every single Sunday 
And so we just wait upon the Lord. Sure, we have a little bit of a plan. And for this servant, there was a plan. Okay, I'm going to go to some place. It's kind of like Abraham. I mean, Abraham was passing along some of the lessons that he learned. And the Bible, over 70 times in the New Testament, makes reference second to uh, Moses only, which was 80 times. So up there, uh, the New Testament references Abraham 70 times as an example of faith, obedience, and perseverance. And so here he's passing along these lessons to his servant. You know, God called me to go to a place, and I didn't know really what was in store for me, but I believe that God is going to be with you. And if you pray, because Abraham called upon the name of the Lord, we saw that multiple times, set up an altar and sought him. Here this servant is now praying, behold, here I stand at the well of water, and the daughters of men in the city are coming out to draw water. Now let it be that the young woman to whom I say, please let down your pitcher that I may drink, and she says, drink, and I will also give your camels a drink. Let her be the one you have appointed for your servant Isaac, and by this I will know that you have shown kindness to my master. So this is a really brief prayer. In fact, later on, uh, we see in verse 15, he's going to give, a, a, a re, he's going to recount his experience of Abraham giving him command to go and him praying and him waiting and Rebecca coming and fulfilling this, the details of this prayer and uh, then uh, introducing uh, the servant to Rebecca's family. And then in verse 45, he's telling uh, Laban, which is a uh, uh, family member of Rebecca, as he goes back and he's like, wow, God, you're answering these prayers. He says, but before I had finished speaking in my heart, there was Rebecca. And so I, I love this verse because if you look at Isaiah chapter 65, uh, verse 24, it's a really great verse if you're a prayer warrior or even if you're not, uh, just to be reminded of God hearing us. It says, before they call, I will answer. And while they are still speaking, I will hear. That God hears and is near and draws close uh, to those who are uh, having a, have a broken heart and saves those who are crushed in spirit. And uh, Jesus actually references this in the Sermon on the Mount when he says, well, uh, you know, don't worry about what you will eat and what you will wear or where you will live because your heavenly Father knows that you need all these things even before you ask of them. But seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these things will be added unto you. And so there are some lessons to be learned here as this servant makes the pledge to Abraham and then there is a, a proposal to Rebecca. But in the midst of this, there is this beautiful prayer and an example I think that we can kind of take away this morning and maybe apply even to our own lives but the beautiful thing is that the servant goes. He went. The scripture says, so I went. And oftentimes, God won't begin to move things in our lives until we get moving. You know, as the, there was, what's the saying? It's, a, it's hard to steer a parked car. Well, when you and I shift our faith into gear it's a lot easier for God to steer. As we begin to shift our faith into gear, now what does that mean? That means that you get knowing God's will when you get going God's way. And we might not know all the details about that, but if we are willing, as the example of Abraham, to take those steps of faith and trust the Lord, and um, one of the other verses that I really love about understanding God's will is that it says uh, whether you turn to the right or to the left your ears will hear a voice behind you saying this is the way walk in it and so as we begin to put our faith in action God begins to move circumstances in our lives which confirms his providential will now it's not just circumstances in fact God uses circumstances in the servant to confirm what God was doing and also his prayers. But it begins with prayer. 
So don't look at your circumstances right now and say, wow, everything is just really messy and I can't see God at all in these things. Well, uh, praying the will of God begins by privately seeking the Lord. The scripture says he prayed in his heart. Now, the only advice you and I need in the next step of God's will in your life is the voice of heaven. It's his voice. Sure, there might be some advice and some counsel and some wisdom that you'll receive from other people, but there is no greater counsel that we can receive apart from the word of God. And as we privately pray and seek the Lord, something amazing happens. He begins to give you peace. The Bible says that um, we should not be anxious about anything, but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, present our requests to the Lord and the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, will guard our hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. That means all the things that you're thinking about, all the things that keep you up at night, that um, wake you up at night, in the middle of the night, because your mind starts racing and you can't shut it off. I wish I had a shut-off switch. I don't know about you, but man, it, boy, there's times when I just toss and turn and, and worry, and, uh, and my heart even gets worried. And so there's this pressure release valve that God provides for us in prayer. And the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, will guard your heart and mind in Christ Jesus. It's actually prayer. It, it does two things. It shifts our faith into gear for God to move us forward but it also downshifts our fear to keep us calm. Isn't that a beautiful thing? It's like, okay, God, you got this. I'm going to trust you, but now I'm going to get going and get moving along with you. And so so it starts with prayer, but prayer is not a substitute for participation. As we get going and we get serving and we get uh, seeing God In our circumstances, we start participating in the process. So it begins privately in prayer and then also honestly in prayer. Just take those things that are overwhelming you uh, to the Lord. Just let it flow out of your heart, flow out of your head. As the scripture says, he already knows and he already answers even before we say a word or even while we are still speaking. You know what that tells me? That tells me that God is is intimately concerned about the details of your life. Every detail. And just because he knows them doesn't mean we don't share them. The beautiful thing is that the minute we lay our burdens down to Jesus, he picks them up. But you've got to lay them down for him to pick them up. That's why Jesus says, come to me all who are weary and heavy burdened, and I will give you rest for your soul. That's the rest that Jesus gives, rest for your soul. And that's honestly before the Lord, saying, like the servant, man, how is this going to happen? How are these circumstances going to take place? I'm not sure, but I'm going to trust you, and I'm going to get going, and I'm going to see you fulfill your plan and your will in my life, honestly. Honestly in your fears, and also specifically in your requests. Okay, God, you know what? I'm going to go to a well. I'm going to see a girl. She's going to water my camels. I'm going to know it's the one. Wow, boy, that's pretty specific. Get specific with the Lord. Not testing the Lord, saying, okay, God, well, if you're here, then I I need you to show up. No, it's saying, God, I'm here, and I'm reporting for duty, sir. I'm yours, and I want to see how you are moving and how you're working in my life. God, give me spiritual eyes in the physical world. That's what he's praying. So it's privately, it's honestly, it's also expectantly. You see, he went, he showed up, and he said, okay, where's she at? I'm ready. I'm ready for you to answer. Now, God, as we mentioned earlier, may answer in his timing and uniquely in his own way. And his answers might not be the answers that we want. So wait upon the Lord. They that wait upon the Lord will renew their strength. They will mount up with wings like eagles. They will run and not grow weary. 
They will walk and not be faint. There will be strength for the road ahead, the promise of his strength when we are weak. And so as you wait upon the Lord, you watch with eyes wide open. Lord, how are you working in this circumstance and in this situation? How are you bringing about your will and your purpose? So expectantly now, also patiently, patiently as he waits, as he's trusting, as he's seeing God fulfill that. And then lastly, thankfully, this is how to pray the will of the Lord, privately in our hearts, seeking him first, honestly in our requests, expectantly knowing that God hears and that he will answer patiently as he brings about his purpose and plan. And then thankfully, there's actually two mentions of the servant after God answers his prayer. Notice in verse 26 of chapter 24. It says, Then the man bowed down his head and worshipped the Lord. And he said, Blessed be the Lord God of my master Abraham, who has uh, not forsaken his mercy and his truth toward my master. And as for me, being on the way, the Lord led me to the house of of my master's brethren. You see how God shifted his faith into gear and his perspective now is, Lord, you were the one who led me. You were the one who blessed me as I was along the way. As I'm going along the way, God, I'm trusting that you're gonna work things out. But notice he bows his head and he worships the Lord. That's a great response to no matter what circumstance we might be experiencing in life, that we can always worship and praise the Lord in even the most violent of of spiritual storms going on in our lives. We can trust that he is working. And the beautiful thing is that everybody who is involved sees God's providential hand. Now, it might take a little while. Laban, it took a little while for him. But Rebecca was like, you got to give her some props. I mean, she's like, who's this strange guy? Who's this Isaac guy? All right, I'll go. Wow, okay. Uh, But she's willing. In fact, uh, at the end of chapter 24, he presents once again this request and proposal. And she says, are you willing? And she says, I will go. I will go. Now, Laban uh, wanted to hold her back. And there are many things that... When faith says, don't hold back, the world will say, just hold up. Just wait a little bit. And when you see the next step, when God reveals the next step to you in prayer, don't hesitate. Take that step of faith. Maybe it's a step of serving the Lord or a step in a relationship or a step back in a relationship. Uh, Those decisions and choices that we face, God is faithful as we would say, I will go, I will seek, I will trust, I'm not going to hold back, I'm going to go as the Lord would lead us and as he would guide us. I think this is a great encouragement and a reminder for us that when we might not know the, uh, the outcome or the things around the corner, we do serve and seek a God who sees all things and is working out all things for our good as we call upon him. Amen? Amen. Well, we'll have the worship team come on up and we'll close in prayer. Heavenly Father, we thank you. We thank you for your grace in our lives. We thank you for this example of of this servant who is wanting to please you and his master. And we want to please you as our master. We thank you that you hear us even before we speak. And you know all the things that concern us. And let me just encourage you as we sing this closing song. To privately in your own heart. Honestly with your concerns. Expectantly that God hears and will answer. Patiently, in whatever time frame God seems fit to bring about his plan and thankfully in worship present those things and have a conversation with your heavenly father who loves you and knows you 
cast those cares and those burdens upon him. And in so doing, you are shifting your faith into gear. And be willing and open and ready for the Lord to steer your life along his way and along his purpose. We love you, God. We thank you for answering. We seek you now. In Jesus' name. Amen. Come, let us worship and bow down before the Lord most holy. For the King of glory, come lay your burdens down before the friend who is faithful, before the one who is able. For a voice in praise unto the rock of ages to the God who saves us Come, glorify his name all the earth together all the saints forever for he worship and bow down before the Lord most holy before the King of glory come lay your burdens down before the friend who's faithful before the one who's able for he
uh, I don't want this moment to pass. I have a sense that either in this room or watching online that there are some who are holding back. And sure, we might have talked about taking steps of faith, trusting the Lord in your life, but maybe you haven't taken that first step of faith in putting your trust in Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. I can't think of a better time, moment, and place in the quietness of your own heart to commit your life to Jesus Christ who said, I will go. And he went. He demonstrated his own love towards you that even while you were a sinner, Christ died for you. And even while we were rejecting him, he said on the cross, it is finished. That God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. That whosoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life. For what will a person give in exchange for his, for his soul? You see, brother, sister, friend, this is a matter of eternity. Eternal matters here. This is what really counts. And I believe that Jesus is calling you. Calling you close. Calling you to come. To receive. To surrender. To believe. If that's you, then this isn't something that some pastor is trying to make an emotional appeal. It is the Lord Jesus Christ speaking to you and I would say talk with him you say Jesus forgive me of my sins I acknowledge that I'm a sinner my sin has separated me from you and I have been on this path of selfish sinning for a long time I have been doing things my way it hasn't worked out. It's caused a lot of confusion, hurt and pain in my life. But I believe that you died on the cross for my sin. That you have come to give me life and life more abundantly. That you are the Son of God, the Lamb of God. He was crucified on the cross. And my sin put Jesus on that cross. that you were buried and that you rose again the third day conquering death and sin and that you give me a resurrected life by placing my faith in Jesus Christ through your grace it's not of my works I haven't done anything to earn it Jesus has done what I could not do I receive simply by grace through faith Make me new. Make me born again. Make me pass from death to life. Thank you that when I confess my sin, you are faithful and just to forgive me and to cleanse me from all unrighteousness. And that if anyone is in Christ, they are a new creation. The old has passed away and all things become new. Thank you for new life. This new life in Jesus Christ. Fill me with your Holy Spirit. Let me hear your voice. Give me a hunger and a heart for the things of God. For your word. To walk with you. That's all God has and asks of us. walk humbly seek mercy and to 
but do justly. Thank you. Love you. In Jesus' name. Listen, if you prayed that prayer, we've got a nice water tank out there to baptize you. So we're just going to go, we're going to cleanse you and we're going to dip you. No. Well, we will. But you just made the most important decision of your entire life. And we want to celebrate that. And we want to encourage you. And we want to support you. So we want to know about that decision. Now, if you're watching online, you can let us know by putting a little cross Actually, put a grave emoji. You know the little tombstone emoji? And then a cross emoji. And then the praising hands emoji. We'll just know. Okay. You prayed that prayer. Awesome. We love you. If you need prayer, put the prayer emoji. And we'll pray for you. You don't even need to share it. Prayer, you can. But we would love to hear of that decision today. And let me know. One of our pastors know, or let your family know, or let all Facebook know, <laughs> whatever it is, we're grateful. And so uh, we want to give you a Bible, and if you don't have one, and pray with you and for you. But as we are dismissed, um, we're going to have baptisms and we couldn't think of a better time to have baptisms and a better way. We've got some nice horse troughs out there, so the horses came and drank their water earlier, and we put some some bromine in there, so we're not going to burn you, but we've disinfected the water, so that's a good thing. Um, but uh, grab some refreshments and join us in like 10 minutes, and we'll baptize and celebrate what God's doing in our lives. Amen? Amen. God bless you guys. Love you so much. God's with you. He goes before you. He's got this. Come on. He's got this, right? Have a great week.